Hi guys, this is Kate from Three Whiskers. Um, today we're gonna be doing intro crochet stuff. Um, so what you need to do, first off, like a lot of times I've seen people who have the yarn and they need the hook, or they have the hook and they need the yarn, whichever. It works. For the purposes of this, we're going to be using Lily's uh, Sugar and Cream 100% uh, cotton. Not sponsored. Wish it was, because materials are expensive. Really. Uh, not so much this, but still. But I'm using this one just because I've been trying to do a lot more with natural fibers and cotton and wool are the only two that I've readily been able to find recently and it's getting hot so we're doing cotton not wool at the moment so when you start a project like if if it's a new skein you have the the ball the um the skein whatever you want to call it really it's the same thing like that and you see there's one end sticking up here. You can use that one, but in my experience it seems to go smoother if you take the one out of the inside. And it could be on, on either end. Sometimes there's a little arrow pointing to the side that it works for. But this one... No, no this one doesn't. But if you just kind of feel around in there, a lot of times when you pull it out, there's a big clump that comes with it. So you just wrap the excess <coughs> around the um, around the skein, like so. And then as you're working on it, it comes off. So now that we figured out that, you have you have your yarn and the hook. Now. In order to see if it's gonna work, you try and you see that there. Uh, you try and see for that. Uh, this one, okay. and you can. Ooh, where is it? There we go. So you can see on here. I'm dropping everything. Um, you can see on here that it's a four ply. And it's wanting an H or an 8 hook. You can use other ones, it's just gonna have a different effect. Like the ideal hook for this size yarn um, to have just a nice sort of flat, even spacing is an H or an 8. Um, going by the American measurements, it'd be a 5mm going by virtually everywhere else. Uh, so that's going to be one of these. And I'm just going to show you a difference of how it looks. So this is a 6 right now. There we go. So that's a six. That's an eight. So it's just, it's a little bit bigger. So you can use this, it's just going to be a lot tighter than this one. Same as you could use this one that is a nine but it's going to be more airy than you might want, depending on the project that you're working on. So for right now, we're going to go with what it says on the thing and do that. Um, I'm going to do some sample stitches and then uh, get out of the frame and try and show you um, what it's looking like in person. So, all right. So you have the, the yarn, the thread, whatever it is that you're working on. You can even use strips of fabric if you wanted to, but we'll get to that in another video down the line. If 
it seems like something that's interesting. Just leave me a note in the book description or <clears throat> can't talk to me. Leave me a note in the comments if you want to see that. So I knew I'd probably do it anyway honestly but the timing and all that. So this is the H. So first off you have the yarn and then See if I can get it close up here. There we go. So you just do that. And a slip knot. So that when you put the hook in there, you can just tighten it and it's there. Now, especially for the first row, like if you're just doing a chain, that's fine. That's a lot of people's first projects. But if you're doing a larger project, like a scarf, or a potholder, or whatever it is that you want to do for your first foray into crochet, you need to keep the, the initial row fairly loose, just so that it doesn't warp the rest of the project that you're working on. Um, so... There's two main ways to do to do a crochet thing. So first I'm gonna do like a flat thing. So I'm gonna try and get you to be able to see it. But so you wrap the hook around the yarn and pull through. And you just keep doing that for as long as you want the chain to be. So let's go with that. So it'd probably be like a belt or whatever it is that it ends up being. And then you do one extra of what you just did and then you're gonna come back right in the second to the last one so the one before the one that you just did and just pick up one of like just pick up the top so it looks like that kind of and do the same thing going back And then you have something that kind of looks like that. Um, Alright. So now I'm gonna get out of the frame and try and actually have a demo for you because I know when I'm trying to figure it out, that makes it a lot easier for me. So, be back in a sec. Hopefully this works. <laughs> so, again, because I took it out. So... There's that. Okay. And yeah, you want to make sure that where is it? You want to make sure that this end is not the one that you end up crocheting on, because yeah, <laughs> it doesn't work. <clears throat> I've done that enough times that it just not work. Alright. <laughs> I'm trying to do this above the camera and actually keep it in frame, so. Seems to be working. Let me know. Let me know if this way of of doing stuff actually works for you guys, alright? 
Okay. So now you have... Alright, now you have your chain. And you're gonna go one more. So, like, if this is how long you want the thing to be. You're gonna do one more of the same thing of what you just did. And then... Right, where is it? And then go into the second to last one. That one, right there. And... Do that. Because the last stitch that you did... Um, is gonna be, like... Kind of stairs going to the next level, basically. And then... You just keep going... Back... Now, you can go all the way back to the first bit. You don't have to. Um, but, go over for this one. So, you just keep going. Like that. And then you want to go until you're in that initial stitch at the end there. So that's that's the end of the row, unless you want to add another thing in there. But we'll get to that later. Um, and then you do another one and just flip it around and go back. And then you have something that's like that and it does look kind of of airy if you can see that in there you can do what's called a double crochet which it might be too advanced for some of you guys I don't know let me know what kind of pace you want these to go at you have the the regular crochet and stuff double is just you wrap yarn around the hook once and then you go into and depending on the design that you're going with um it's either one or both of the um both of the sides of the stitch you can kind of see it right there it's it's one or both sides and that's for a crochet across the board so you wrap it around and go in the for right now I'm doing both sides. Uh, so you wrap it around and go in both sides, pull it out, and then you do the first two, and then you do the second two. Oh, isn't it? Okay. And then you can just keep doing that for however many. And in my experience, um, you can do that as many times as you want, really. Because it, it opens it up a little bit like that. I've done, I think, up to five before, but that was with a crochet thread, so it was really thin and lacy. So it just depends on the effect that you're going for. And... Then if you go back to single, after you've just done a few doubles, it 
like something like where is it so the doubles are right in there so it's kind of bowed out and stuff if anyone has any questions with any of that that, that we were just working on let me know in the comments uh, I'll get back to you when I can uh, be either today or next few days um we do have a shop too i it's through whiskers.com i'm gonna have a link here yeah here i'm gonna have a link here and also in the description for everybody who's on their phone along with uh twitter instagram facebook a lot of it uh and pinterest we're on pinterest too so yeah just let me know what you'd like to see so yeah uh links will be everywhere and let me know what you'd like to see uh have a lovely day see you later